another episode of Spotlight On. We're here today with Kamari Tally, a student at Rutgers Camden University and a graduate of Creative Arts Morgan Village Academy back in 2012. Ms. Tally is also the author of a new poetry book, Camden, Only the Strong Survive. Thanks for being here with us today. Thank you. So tell us first of all about where you are now. Uh, you're still in school, is that right? Mm -hmm. And so where do, you, where do you currently go to school? I go to Rutgers Camden. And what do, you, what do you study? What year are you? I will be graduating next, next summer, okay. and I am an English major. Great. And so how did you end up uh, coming out of Creative Arts, Morgan Village Academy? How did you end up at, <laughs> at uh, Rutgers Camden? Was it, was it a direct connection, or has, have there been a few stops? Well, there's definitely been milestones throughout my whole collegiate ca career. Um, coming out of uh, Morgan Village, the school I went to in 2012, I was expected to go to Division I school at mm -hmm. first. That is um, University of Albany. However, my SAT scores were not what they needed to be. Mm. I'm a very good student, though. My grades are excellent. It's just the fact that my SAT scores weren't sufficient to mm. get into that school. So that led me to go to junior college. Okay. My first junior college was um, Daytona State in Florida. Okay. And then so from there, I have, I've had a lot of stuff I've been through there. Had to wake up 6 a.m. every morning to get a ride with someone I never know. And so from there, it started getting unbearable. I would call my mom and say, Yo, I can't do this anymore. Mm. That was nerve wracking to me and to them, being so far away. So I went from there to um, <clears throat> Paris, Texas. Okay. It's another junior college. Okay. And so I've, I've got there in the spring semester. Okay. And so maintain my um, academics as usual. However, I couldn't continue the season because you can't play if you transfer in the middle mm. of the season. Mm. So by me doing that, you know, I just started to just continue to work out with the team, go through, um, excuse me, go through the academic requirements like I needed to, go through the study hall. It was, it was a great time. But then in the summer when I got home, I got an email or a text saying that they were going to discontinue the program mm. for women's basketball. Mm. So I had no choice but to leave. So from there, I went back to Camden County, okay. where I had a phenomenal year, both academically and athletically. I've got um, on a dean's list. I've just received my AA degree about a couple of weeks ago from there. Okay, congratulations. Um, all American, all region, all conference, um, just heavily weighted, excellent. You know, just everything was just working out. 604 points in one year. Wow, okay. So I, I've had a great year throughout yeah. the college. So from there, I kept on working hard. I always known I was going to go to Division One. That was the plan. I said before I couldn't go to Albany. I never gave up. Mm. I kept going. Mm -hmm. So by me going to those other schools I was at, I just kept knowing, all right, something's got to happen. Something's got to happen. Interesting story. The same individual who got me to St. Francis University okay. was the same recruiter who recruited me for Albany. Huh. His name is Adam Barrett. Okay. So once I got to St. Francis University, again, I've um, learned different people again, you yeah. know, the whole stages of that. And it's, it's kind of, I can say, looking back from retrospect, it's kind of like hard leaving from one school to the next. You meet so many people, you know, so many people who support me, who mm -hmm. reach out to me to this day, asking me, how are you? I know you're a great person. You're a great student. You're a great athlete. I just want to know how you are. And that, you know, it hurts sometimes because I'm such a people's person. So I'm like, oh, I miss these people. I miss that person. But life goes on. Yeah. It goes on. So I've had, oh, my goodness, being at St. Francis was a terrible yeah, beautiful thing. Okay. I got. I went to Italy for the first time ever. Wow. Milan, Rome, uh, Verano. Uh, I saw the Colosseum. I, I had a beautiful time, but I was treated unjust by the coaches. Okay. On multiple times, they would tell me every time we went out for um, community service, "Oh, Kamari, does this remind you of Camden?" And I said to myself, as I told you before, "What does Camden look like? Mm. Is, is there a certain look to being from Camden? What are you mm. saying to me?" Mm. Perpetually, he constantly did it. So that got to a point where it was overwhelming. You got me from where I was at, at the um, junior college to bring me to your university. Why treat me like that? Mm -hmm. Why talk to me like that? Mm -hmm. And what I come to find out is that within these Division I schools, so many young girls, young men, are just being abused mentally. You know, they're being talked to unfair, it's unjust. It's not right. Mm -hmm. And so for me leaving from that Division I school to be at Rutgers Camden, which is a Division Three school, that takes faith and courage. Yeah. It means I don't, I don't care about the money. Right. Because that would have, was, it was coming down to, essentially, the money. They, they paid my full 37000 oh. which was a blessing. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm not going to be treated like that. Right. I know so, my worth. Right. right. So from there, I got into um, Rutgers Camden. 
had a phenomenal year. Even though I played a, a half a semester, which is yeah, half a semester, I've scored 221 points total. I have 949 achieved points in 55 games. So next year, I should be about 1,000 points plus nice. joining that club. Nice. So throughout the, my whole experience in college, it has been beautiful. I've been winning ac oh, I'm sorry. I've been winning. Ac um, I've been winning athletically and yeah. academically. You know, I maintain about a 3.0 right now, and I've have um, just received the Player of the Week award too, right. like a couple of like a month ago. Okay. I received that award. Okay. So it's been beautiful, and that's how I got to where I'm at now. And and what has kept you going through all these stops? It's it's this is your sounds like your fifth college right. in three years, mm -hmm. and you're getting closer to the finish line now. Right. But what's kept you going from Florida to Texas to St. Francis now back here? Um, what's what are you chasing? What are you after? I have pursue it? I have a big dream that I will make it to the WNBA. I know I am going to make it. I, my, my drive is, is consistent, it's contagious. I know what I want and I'm going to get it. And also I believe in God, I trust God. Mm -hmm. You can't make it without him. You know, me, my family has always installed in us, you finish what you start, but you keep God first in all that you do. So by me, you know, preaching and reaching out to people, I believe in God. You can't make it without that. Faith is everything. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not what you say, it's what you do. That's what faith is. And so, Along with my faith, with my persistence, with my ambition, my motivation is going to get me to the WNBA and beyond because I'm not just a basketball player. I'm so much more than that. So the WNBA, that would be fantastic, obviously. Mm -hmm. And then should you have the WNBA career, you're still uh, through with that career. You retire from the NBA. You're in your 30s, let's say. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what comes after that to your mind? What are you interested in doing down the line? Well, my mind will outlast my legs. As said, so I plan to um, be a businesswoman. Okay. I have multi-billion-dollar ideas, sports bras. Uh, the list goes on. Again, poetry books. Mm -hmm. um, I might get into playwrights. Oh. There's so much opportunity for me. As said, I'm not just a basketball player. So, the best is yet to come. Okay. And w what are your other interests? If, <laughs> if you're able to share, you're not just a basketball player. You're interested in in business, but you study. At Rutgers, you study English. Mm -hmm. You're writing poetry books, uh, and, and you also say that you um, you've preached before. Uh, yes. You've done ministry. Yes. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yes. The very first time that I preached was at um, Higher Ground Temple Church in North Camden. Okay. Pastor Barron, and he we first had a conversation, and in that conversation he felt led by God to allow me to preach mm. one day for Youth Day, and so I'd never preached before. You know, all I do is in conversation, tell people about God. But the very first time before congregation, I was excited. I knew I could do it. That's something I want to do as well, mm. be a pastor one day. Mm. So I've got the opportunity and I went after it. It was beautiful. From there, I've preached two other times okay. in Philadelphia and in Camden again. Okay. And it's, it has just been such an uplifting experience, yeah. giving hope to people. Yeah. When people see me at the age that I am, yeah. 20 years old, on fire for God, it's, it's fascinating to people. They don't believe that it can be done before. Right. But my lifestyle is made out in such a way that you will know yeah. God is doing this. Yeah. yeah. And is this something that you saw coming? Is this public speaking has always been your interest and therefore you imagined speaking in front of large crowds? Or is this something that more came out of nowhere and, and you've had to <coughs> overcome? Most people aren't very fond of public speaking. Right. Now, when I very first at um, Cooper's Point, mm -hmm. that's where I went to middle school at, I used to be petrified to play basketball, huh. afraid. And so throughout the years, like a puzzle piece, it unrolls. Everything comes out into perspective. Mm -hmm. And I feel as though I am just on a rise with growth, coming from fear to play basketball, to be before people playing basketball, to be before people speaking. Mm -hmm. That takes encouragement uplifting mm. and that came from God and I believe I can say that that's just something that came out of nowhere I never would imagine that I would be speaking right now in this interview right. but I believed and I did this last year I constantly speak life mm. that's what I do God says to call that that was not to be as though it was so I constantly say to myself you're going to be on an interview you're going to make it this is going to happen mm -hmm. and so in my mind I rehearse 
this whole situation mm -hmm. until it happens. Mm -hmm. See, words go to places, time frames, and dimensions. So you have to be very careful of the words that you say because it will happen. Mm -hmm. Life and death is in the power of the tongue, Proverbs 18.22. So knowing that your mouth is so potent, so powerful, you are a lethal weapon, literally. You can either self-destruct or you can make manifest things happen. And so, as I said before, you just have to know what you want out of life. Mm -hmm. You'll get there. And just because you may start out fearful or shy like I did, just know you will be evolved into this awesome being mm. that you never thought you could be. Mm. And, and you obviously have a very strong interest in, in words and writing. Uh, at Cooper's Point, at Creative Arts, were there teachers, were there moments along the way in your education in Camden that, uh, I don't know if the light bulb went off, so to speak, but mm -hmm. um, were there teachers or, or, uh, or classes that had a particular impact on you? Right. Um, not until I got to Creative Arts Working Village Academy. That school, awesome. Dr. Coe was doing an excellent job. Mm -hmm. They're phenomenal. However, to allow a person to work on their expertise, such as fine arts, as writing and um, acting and uh, music, to have courses designed for that one thing mm -hmm. will bring out the best in a person. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't realize how, uh, how great my writing was until I got there. Um, when I started writing it for the first time, I said, I wrote this. This is awesome. Yeah. And so from there, like the time before, the fear evolved out of me mm. from going there, taking that course my junior year. So speaking of writing and creative writing, uh, you have uh, your new poetry book that mm -hmm. came out as published last week. Is that yes, right? Yes, that's right. So can you share um, <clears throat> how this came to be and then maybe share a poem or two with us? Sure. So I do a lot of um, speaking engagements as far as um, people needing me to come out to fashion shows or motivational speaking. And uh, so I just decided because I speak those poems so much, you have to be mindful of people who may try to take your words. So I needed to get every last word that I say and copy. So that compelled me to write the book. However, every last poem in that book was written my senior or junior year back in high school. Okay. So this is nothing new. Okay. It's always been. Okay. But this is the very first time it's been in the book. Okay. And, and so. Yeah, would you be willing to share one or two of those? Definitely, us? definitely. Okay, thank you. So my very first poem I like to share is Dreaming from the Heart. And when you dream, dream passionate. Don't ever let your dreams die in the casket. Put your heart in it, search it from the heart of it, and know that people will be there to discourage you, to make you think that your dreams will never come true. But when you know the dream so well that it knows you, like you chased the dream so long that it chased you, you realize the last confess weren't true. So the meaning of the poem, the little sing-along, when you dream, dream passionate. Don't ever let your dreams die in a casket. And when them people come back to discourage you, to make you feel dull, weak, hopeless, and confused, no sweat, just play your part. And never stop dreaming from the heart. And this next one is called Camden. <clears throat> As I walk these streets, this is what I see. Little boys living life and the rest to be a man. Little girls turn into manipulative women with no protection. Out in these streets searching for affection. But erection isn't true, but erection isn't true affection because God is love, so it's only true when it comes from above. I've seen more prostitutes than business suits. More crack fiends than drug dealers. Broken dreams, babies suffering from low self-esteem, fearful games playing dangerous games, graffiti sheets remembering those who were once living, stressed parents, this would be in adolescence. Yes, they never learned a lesson. And they say we live in a city where struggle resides, but they fail to realize we're the city where talent lies and greatness will one day rise. There is no lie, some things they say are true. Like, yeah, we're the city where teenage pregnancy lies, depression that rise, bullets that fly, but have they ever tried to look beyond the scenes to recognize those waiting in the wings? Those who desire fame, but cherish pain. And even though we live in a city where sugar resides, only the strong will survive. I'm talking about Camden. Camden. So if I can make it through, what can't you do? <laughs> well done. Well done. Thank, <laughs> Thank you very you. much for sharing this. Thank you. What, uh, what's been the inspiration for your writing and for, for poetry? I don't know I'm, whether you read poetry as much as you write poetry, but right. um, clearly well-developed poems there. Thank you. Um, what's been the, the inspiration there? Motivating force has been growing up in Camden, every last thing I said in that Camden piece, you see it's prevalent. Mm. It's not a lie. It's not a mystery. You see that. Mm. And it bothers me. You know, when I see that the, the people my age or younger with children at an early age who it's not a bad thing because you can learn how to grow up through your child. Even mm. if that does happen, mm. it'll still work out for your good. However, what about your dreams and ambitions? 
you know, your desires that you want to get, that mm -hmm. you want to reach. And so just looking at it, like, I just want to be better for my family. So when people see me, they can look up to me and say, wow, that girl, if she don't do nothing, she believed. Mm -hmm. And she spoke life. And she made it through. And, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to judge anybody or anything like that. But like I said, you do see the, the deaths and everything happening in Camden. And it is so awful to see. Mm -hmm. It bothers me. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's unjust. And I do believe that a change is on its way. You know, you have so many, you know, youth doing things like um, my former basketball player, Chanel Perry. Mm -hmm. She's at Clemson. Right. Awesome, beautiful person. Yeah. She's going to make it too. Yeah. Um, you have Camden High's of uh, sports, and you have Woodrow Wilson sports. You have creative arts. You have so many angles of positivity mm -hmm. that's on a rise. You know, so I, I hope and I pray that the, the deaths, the killing, the backbiting, that it dies down eventually. Yeah. Because sooner or later, you, you just got to get tired of the things you see. Right. You have to be the change that you want to see. Right. And given how many places you've been, you've represented Camden in Florida, in right. Texas, in Pennsylvania. Uh, what have you learned about Camden by being away from it? <clears throat> and now that you're back, uh, how are you applying those lessons? Wow. Okay, so you definitely learned survival tools. Exactly why that book is called Camden Only Shown Survive. My first time at um, St. Francis, it is um, a Catholic school, and I, one time I was the only black student in the class. Mm. And the teacher began to expound upon, within her um, class requirement, um, Camden. She had no idea I was from Camden. Mm. And she talked about how, you know, distressed the city is, everything that you see going on. And so once I began to speak in that class, so many people were like, oh, my goodness, they was just loving me. Mm -hmm. They said, you know, in their minds, I, I'm almost certain that they would never expect me to be from Camden mm -hmm. because of the way I carried myself. So in my eyes, being from Camden teaches you how to be strong, but you, again, don't have to, the, the way that there's a killing is still in it. You don't have to emulate that or imitate that. You be better than that. Mm. And that is what I do. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to, to cuss people out. I'm, I'm going to make sure I speak with a perfect articulation of vocabulary. Why? Because I'm going somewhere. You know, you, 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 what you do in life is prepare yourself for where you're going, not for where you're at. And I'm constantly on a rise of, okay, how can I fix this? And again, to basketball, just to throw this in there, mm -hmm. I am somewhat of a perfectionist. Like sometimes I'll go over in my head over and over again about a game that, you know, what happened, what could I have done better at? And I'm starting to learn why do that? You know, like it, you don't have to beat yourself up about everything. Mm -hmm. Be patient with yourself. You're mm -hmm. doing as best as you can. So, you know, being as though with basketball in Camden, it all mounds into one, you know, and it just, just helps me for the better. Sure, sure. Yeah. And for for students who are watching, current students who might still be figuring out where they want to go mm -hmm. and how they're going to get there, right. uh, advice, thoughts, uh, lessons that you would share with them? Definitely. If you are a junior or a sophomore, please start working on SAT scores. Highly important. Standardized tests is what uh, kills us in the inner city. Why? Because they want to make sure that you can do college work. So make sure that you are at these SAT programs. They're offered. They're free. Take advantage of it because you need to do as best as you can to get to where you want to go. Also, make sure that you maintain great grades. You want to finish with a 4.0, 3.0. See, the, the better that you do here in high school will show when you get to college, maybe in my predicament, only black in the class, how will you respond to that? Will you act as if you don't know how to articulate yourself well? Or would you rise above that and show them I know how to speak? Being from Camden, that does not define me. Let me remind you, I am who I am. You know, and so <clears throat> another thing that I would like to say, if you are into sports, take advantage of that. I got a full scholarship off of playing basketball. I plan to take that up a notch and go professionally one day. So make sure you take advantage of your academics and your athletics. Also, <clears throat> and this is very important, what I want to add into it in there as well. When it comes down to academics, don't treat it as though it's just a game. Oh, I don't care how well I do. That's a record, a record. It follows you. So make sure that you do well on it. Also, I want to add on there, please never give up on yourself. Never give up. Look at my experience. Five schools, five. Not one, not two, but five. I continue to persist against all odds. Don't you ever give up. I don't care if you don't know where you want to go at in school. I don't care if you don't know what you want to make of yourself in life. Just know that you will be what God tells you you'll be. Please don't give up, though. You have so much to live for.
God bless. Um, if you would like to follow me on um, Facebook, I am Kamari Tally. Or on Instagram, KT Ball for Christ. On Twitter, at KT Ball for Christ as well. Thanks for listening. God bless you. And thank you. If you'd like to follow the school district on Twitter, it's Camden Schools on Facebook and YouTube as well. YouTube is where you'll find this interview uh, and many other interviews uh, as well. If you're interested in uh, nominating someone for another episode of Spotlight On, please email us at communications at camden.k12.nj.us. Thanks again for joining us. Thank you for watching and have a great day.